Hey everyone, this is Eric and welcome to my channel. This is going to be part two of my Lexus lift kit installation video. Part one was the rear suspension where I did a full coilover conversion. Part two now is going to be the front suspension. This is, I'm doing upper control arms, lower control arms, new axle shafts, seals, new coilovers, the whole thing, completely refreshing the front end. So stay tuned and like and subscribe if you want to see more. I have bought a Dobinson's IMS lift kit with Freedom Off-Road Upper Control Arms, Duro Bump Rear Bump Stops, and these are for extended travel, and my rear shocks are extended travel. I got new GX460 Reman Axles, and the Metal Tech 2.0 uh, Rear Coil Conversion Kit with the like rubber cones, and then an I'm Keith uh, Rear Pan Hard Relocation Bracket that has to be welded on. So I went with the teal color, and I went with heavy duty rear springs. These are six to 800 pound springs. And I did this because I'm gonna put a rear bumper on with a tire carrier and a rooftop tent. So I wanna be able to support that in the rear. And then the front uh, coilovers, I have heavy duty springs. So these are, I think 100 to 200 pound. I'm going to be putting on a bumper with a winch. So basically making sure that the front uh, can support that sort of weight. So. I will be putting part numbers for everything I got in the video description. So stay tuned and watch me. The front well. suspension, this is pretty much all the tools you're going to need. So starting, I've got a pry bar. I've got one with a metal end cap to be able to hammer. I've got a smaller one. I'm using a three pound sledge, a rubber mallet, and then a dead blow one that's got sand in it. For the axle nut, it's 35 millimeter. This one's big. I'm using a really short, uh, 14 millimeter for the top bolts, six millimeter hex for the uh, sway bar end links, some pliers, uh, flathead screwdriver, 10, 12, 17, 19, 21, and 24 millimeter sockets. If you have short and uh, deep weld, that helps. Uh, three eighths and half inch wrenches. Got the Milwaukee impacts to get those stubborn bolts off. Uh, 19, 17, 14, and 12 millimeter uh, wrenches. If you have ratcheting, that helps and then a torque wrench to finish everything off at the end. Getting started here on the front. It may look a little bit daunting at first, but take it step by step, and this is how I'm gonna do it. So first thing I'm gonna do is take off the sway bar end link. This is a 17 millimeter bolt, and then you use a six millimeter hex if it's your OE uh, end link to hold it in to keep this from spinning. To get the sway bar end link, I'm gonna use a 17 millimeter socket on an impact, and this is just to get the bolt loosened up. But now you can see this is spinning. So because that's spinning, but the bolt is loose, I'm gonna use a six millimeter hex in here and then a 17 millimeter wrench on the bolt. And that'll be able to loosen this. Now, that's why our end link is out. One thing I like to do with the uh, hardware that I take off, so here's the end link. I'm just gonna screw the nut right back onto this. And that kind of helps me keep track of which hardware goes where, and it's not gonna get lost. The next thing I'm gonna do is remove the uh, ABS line right here. So on the upper control arm, this is going to be a 10 millimeter bolt. On the rear side uh, of the spindle, you're gonna have a 12 millimeter and a 10 millimeter. So this is kind of a joint bracket. You'll take these off, um, loosen this up. And don't take the first bolt off all the way because this will keep the bracket from rotating because it's got an anti-rotation device. And then take off this 10 millimeter while you're in here. And then once those bolts are loose, it'll be easy to just remove this bracket. And here's your two bolts and save these because you'll be reusing these. And then this bracket, just kind of wiggle it off. Uh, this 
it's kind of gets kind of stuck a little bit because of that anti-rotation device. Uh, I'm just going to use a small pry bar just to get it off. And here we go. So removing this will keep you from stretching the brake lines and all that when you're working to uh, get this off and get the axle out. In order to make it easier for me to remove this front axle, I'm going to take off the front caliper. This is going to help me a lot. So two 17 millimeter bolts, top and bottom. Then I'm going to hang this caliper with some uh, straps by these two frame holes to keep the brake line from getting super stretched out. Before pulling the caliper fully off, there's these two plastic clips right here that hold the ABS line. So use a flathead screwdriver, just pop them open like this, just pops it open and slide this out to keep this from stretching. There's a second one here and then the sensor itself is right down here. So I'm just going to unplug the sensor and it's just gonna make sure that I don't stretch this ABS line at all. To take the sensor off, you could see that there is a uh, little tab in here. So right here, what you'll do is you stick a flathead screwdriver between the tab and the outside face of the sensor. This will release it, and then all you gotta do is just kind of wiggle it out and pull it out. And then now, uh, the sensor right here, I'm going to use some tape and just tape it around so nothing gets inside. Now that I have the caliper tucked out of the way, here's the uh, ABS line, there's some slack. Here's the rubber brake line, there's some slack, so that's good to go. And then next thing I'm going to do is start removing this nut for the upper control arm. So there is a um, cotter pin in here. It's a castle nut. What you'll do is... Uh, grab with some needle nose pliers where it's been uh, bent over uh, to loosen the cotter pin and then you could slide it out like this and then here's the cotter pin taken out. Um, let's try with the stubby if this fits. this again with a long breaker bar 19 millimeter and just there we go I cracked it open now I should be able to just uh, wrench this right off you can get rid of the castle knot because if you're getting your control arms they have a new castle knot and now all you have to do is grab your BFH this is a three pound sledge and right here, hit it, and this should pop right out. There we go. What I failed to mention was do not take the uh, spindle from the upper control arm off before you remove the axle nut and this tie rod end link. I'm going to end up just taking this whole hub off. Because I took this off first, it's wobbly. I had to zip tie it to the strut. So yeah, don't make the same mistake I did. Um, first thing I'm gonna do is take this off. That's a 19 and then uh, take the cotter pin out. I have the uh, tie rod off and now I'm gonna take off this dust shield. Um, what I'm gonna do is stick a pry bar here, hit it on the top and dent it. You'll see in a second. So it's dented here. I'm gonna stick this and pop it off and go around. I've seen some people uh, will basically uh, pop this back, uh, basically hammer this in. It's like $6 for two of these, so I just bought new ones. It's much easier than trying to be super careful with it. And now in here, you're gonna have a cotter pin. Uh, you're going to have another little 
uh, retainer, and then you're gonna have your uh, axle nut, which is a 35 millimeter. So let me hold this here so it doesn't rotate. Again, cotter pins are consumable. Replace these. That's trash. Uh, this little retainer, keep this. This is gonna get reused. And then here's your axle nut. This is a 35 millimeter. I have my big trusty half inch Milwaukee Impact. Just watch how fast this thing zips it right off. Easy as that. Now that the axle nut is completely off, thread it back on just so the face of it is like flush. And with this, I'm gonna use a rubber mallet to knock the axle out. And rubber mallet's not gonna damage anything. Kind of one with sand in it, gives me a little more force. So move this camera back. And the axle's starting to slide out. Uh, now that I feel it's starting to slide out, I'm gonna take this nut off on the uh, upper control arm. I ended up putting it back on to make it a little bit easier. Now you can see the axle is coming out. Uh, there's a gap right here. The spindle is out. So now just kind of grab it with two hands or just use your rubber mallet to get the rest of this axle shaft out of the hub. You can see it coming out. Um, I'm just gonna grab a socket that's about the same size start hammering this out. I'm not gonna damage the threads. I'm just gonna actually use uh, this extension. Put it right on the center. You can see the axle sliding out. The last video cut out on me, but you saw me hitting the axle shaft in this way to get it through the bearing as far as I could. Once I got to a point that it couldn't go in anymore, I took out the two 19 millimeter bolts here and here. Uh, they come out from the bottom to basically get the whole knuckle out. And then as soon as this drops out, you could slide the whole knuckle out. And that's sitting right over here with the uh, brake disc on it. And then now I have a lot of clearance to be able to pull the axle shaft out. To pull the axle shaft out of the front end, um, I'm gonna go underneath and I'm gonna use a pry bar. And in here, uh, I'll show you once it's pulled out, uh, the axle has these little tabs, and because I've got a skid plate, I'm going to come in from the front and start to kind of pry it out um, and then rotate it as I need to. So you'll see this come out here in a second. And make sure you have some sort of pan or something underneath to catch any fluid that comes out because it will leak diff fluid, and diff fluid does not smell great. There we go. Now you can see the axle shaft is out. And so uh, these are the little tabs I'm talking about. You can see them right here. So stick a pry bar here and just kind of push it. And you can kind of see my boot is completely torn. So that's why I'm replacing these. Now to remove the front coil over, I'm going to take apart this connector first. Uh, I'm gonna pull this out. And then this is for like the active damping in these shocks. The new coilovers do not have active damping, so I no longer am gonna need it. And there's this module up here that is kind of hard to see with this view, but yeah, this right here, there's two little hex bolts here that are pain to get to. So what I'm gonna end up doing is just stick a crowbar in here and break this off because I have no use for it anymore and it's going to be just much faster. Now I have this connector disconnected 
I'm gonna push the little plastic tabs and get this out like this. And then this up here that goes to the connector is all gonna come off. So what I'm gonna do, grab a big crowbar, stick it in here and just pry down to basically break this connector. And I'm doing this because I don't need it anymore. And there we go. Uh, not the prettiest way to remove it, but it works and you don't have to screw around with trying to fit an Allen key up here. And then especially the one all the way in the back. So this ends up just going in the trash. It's never going to get used again. So 17 millimeter wrench, and then there's a nut up here as well. And that's going to be a 17 millimeter as well. So you're going to use the wrench to hold it down in place and keep the shock from spinning. And then you're going to use your 17 millimeter uh, socket on top to get it off. So I've got my wrench here and then I've got my socket that's going to go right on top. And then once you've got this fully off, this bracket just comes off and you can throw this away. Obviously it's a little tough depending on where your cart has lived and so on, but 200,000 miles on this original suspension, some bolts are going to be kind of stuck. Now that you've got that done, there's three nuts left these two that are visible and then one all the way back here so this one in the back um, you're gonna have to use a ratcheting flex flex head uh, that's what I'm using and that's what I think is gonna be the easiest these two front ones I got a half inch breaker bar with a 14 millimeter socket uh, to get this on and just push there you go this seemed to loosen up. This is like a two and a half foot breaker bar, so I'm not surprised. There we go. Once you kind of break these loose, then it's a little bit easier to just use uh, a ratcheting wrench to just kind of get them off all the way. But breaking them loose is the hardest part. So there's this one. The way I ended up getting the rear nut off and how I'm going to get these front ones is I'm using these Astro Pneumatic uh, micro sockets. So this is a 14 millimeter, but you could see up here there's a hex. So that works for a 17 millimeter wrench. So I put that on, put your wrench on here, and I used a ratcheting wrench. And just like this. I'm able to ratchet it off and this is much lower profile than any sort of ratchet and socket combo so this is how i got it off the rears and this is how i'm going to get the fronts off too next thing i'm going to do is remove the upper control arm so this is one long bolt that goes through the whole thing it is a 19 millimeter you've got a nut here on the rear side and then the bolt slides out um i'll show you how to do it under the hood on the passenger side because you got to remove the power steering reservoir to make it a little bit easier on this side i'm going to see if i can do it without having to remove the battery but uh we'll see in a little bit all right so i sprayed it down with a little bit of pv blaster i pulled this little plastic tab off now let's see if i can get a little more leverage oh there we go it's starting to turn <sighs> Let me uh, double wrench this. Get a little more leverage. And there we go, it's starting to turn. Oh. Slowly but surely, getting this off. I think it is for uh, the brake lines up here. So there's not enough room to fit an impact or any sort of breaker bar with socket. So you're just gonna have to use a wrench. If you have a set of um, 
really long wrenches, that's gonna make it a lot easier. And then you'll get to a point where, like I am now, on the uh, front side, you see the bolt spinning? So you're gonna have to put a 19 millimeter wrench on the front to uh, get this nut off. And then when you get close to the end, be careful not to drop this nut. And then it's also important to notice which way this washer was facing. So it's a little bit concave. And then this concave side goes towards the rear of the vehicle. So you could see it like this. Um, this side goes towards the front of the vehicle. So when you pull it off, just remember to reinstall it that way because the new control arms do not come with hardware and you're gonna reuse this hardware. When you start to slide this bolt out, make sure the washer comes off the bolt head because that's never gonna fit. And then just start sliding the bolt up. And I'll show you here under the hood what that ends up looking like. So this is where it gets a little bit tricky. You can see the bolt right there. You can see it, the bolt head. I'm gonna stick my hand in here, right, right here. This focuses. So uh, this battery tray is in the way and I'm gonna try to get it out without having to take out the battery. But I have a feeling that I'm probably gonna have to take the battery out. I have the battery taken out now and you can see this little bracket that holds the harness uh, for the battery. So I'm gonna take this off, this is a 10 millimeter, and then once I get it out, there's tons of space to get this bolt out. So this will be pretty. Now that this bracket is removed, it's got tons of space, and I can just slide this bolt all the way out. Now that I've got the bolt almost all the way out, and I'm doing this by myself, I'm just gonna continue sliding it out, like through here. There's enough of a gap. Make sure you keep the washer. And there we go. Just get this out of the way. Make sure the bolt's not snagging anything under the engine bay, which it probably is. And here we go. The control arm is out and here's the bolt. So uh, don't lose this bolt. This is gonna get reused. Slide it out, and here we go. I'm just gonna take some uh, Scotch Brite, clean this up a little bit, and it'll be ready to get reinstalled uh, once the new control arms are gonna go in. But before we can do that, I'm gonna unbolt the shock from the bottom. It's already unbolted from the top, and get it out. And then the lower control arm. Uh, that's gonna be a fun one. You'll see in a second. When removing the upper control arm bolt on the passenger side. Um, there is a uh, power steering line that's in the way. So the bolt is right here and it's running into this power steering line on the power steering reservoir. So the easiest thing to do is there's three bolts here on the power steering reservoir, 12 millimeters each. Take this off so you can move this a little bit out of the way and then you can be able to slide this bolt all the way out. To remove the front strut assembly from the lower control arm, it's gonna be two 19 millimeters on this side, it's a little crusty. Just gotta make sure. There we go. Let's clean off a little bit. There we go. And then the 19 on this front side. I use my trusty Milwaukee Impact. Makes easy work of it. And then all you're gonna do is hammer this out. Uh, grab this washer, cause that's gonna end up being reused. I'm using an Allen key, the fattest one I have. And there we go. 
Bolt is out. Here's your bolt, washer. And the nut is somewhere. Um, what I like to do is put them back together how they were. And then that way, when I reassemble, I know exactly how to mount it. Off to the side. And now I'll push this down. And here we go, the shock is coming out. Let me readjust the camera. Like I said, you really got to manhandle it sometimes if it's really stuck. So I'm putting my foot down on this lower controller, push it out of the way, and then just yanking it. Finally got it off after 10 minutes of yanking on this strut it it was a pain so um, I sprayed a ton of PV blaster up here on the bolts you could see kind of how rusty this is this was stuck in there so I just you saw just grab it and yank it and it eventually comes out so now I'm gonna clean this area up and then we're gonna get started on this lower control arm. Now to the lower control arm. So these are cam bolts. So you have a sleeve that goes all the way through the bushing and it is in the shape of a cam and that allows the control arm to move in and out uh, to help adjust your camber. And then you have a single bolt that goes through that sleeve that helps tighten everything up. The problem is on a lot of these Toyotas and Lexuses and uh, the bushing in the lower control arm has a metal sleeve inside. And then the metal cam sleeve fuses together, which means no matter how much you try, you cannot turn this and you cannot adjust your alignment. So, the only real way to fix this is to cut this out. So, right in here, and then right in here, I'm going to use a sawzall and cut right through this sleeve and remove this lower control arm. Here's a good picture of what I was talking about. So, the red is the bolt and the cam sleeve, and that's what gets frozen inside the bushing. I've got a Diablo blade this is a thick heavy duty cutting blade uh, with carbide tips i tried using some other stuff it did not work this is the one to get if you have to do this so basically you'll see where there's a spot between the bushing and the cam Start it up. after about three minutes with the sawzall this is it so this is the sleeve that goes through the bushing you can see how crusty and corroded it is. And I cut right through it. So that's this side. Now I gotta cut this side. And then this front side of the lower control arm will be free. And then I'm gonna move on to the rear. This took about two to three minutes of cutting. Um, it's a bit of a pain, but get yourself a good blade, a fully charged battery, or a plugged in Sawzall, and go to work. If you don't have one, see if you can borrow one. Um, or use an angle grinder. Uh, I'm going to try to maybe save these control arms, but I've seen other people will just cut them here and here just to get easier access to these if they know they're going to completely replace them. But I'm going to try to save these, so I'm being careful not to nick them. I have the front side completely cut out. I stuck the bolt through it here to basically hold the control arm from falling down. I got this rear end cut off, and now just the front side of the rear bushing is all I have left. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put my foot up here and push down on this control arm to get a little more clearance and stick it in here where the bushing is and then uh, go to work with the sawzall. And there we go. Oh, this control arm 
is now officially out. To remove the control arm, I'm just going to take out this bolt on this uh, front side. And there we go, the control arm is out. So you can see right here, um, it's a pretty good cutaway, but you can see where the uh, inner uh, cam bolt is seized into the bushing sleeve. I am replacing these with all new control arms I got from Super Pro. They are poly control arms. It's gonna make the ride a little bit stiffer, but it's gonna be much better handling. So. Um, the one last thing you'll have to do is this piece right here um, on the bottom of the ball joint, there's a cotter pin. This is a 19 millimeter, I believe. And let me check. No, this is, I think, a 21. So pull out the cotter pin, and then this piece right here will get reused on your new ball joint. There we go came off so it's stuck like that because this ball joint is a tapered seat and I have new ball joints new heavy duty ball joints on the super pro control arm so I cracked this boot not a problem do the same on the other side and now that everything is out the final step of uh, removal is the inner diff seals which are in here and after that, we can start reassembly. To install the new diff seal, the first thing you'll have to do is remove the old diff seal. So this is one I installed, but I screwed it up. As you can see, there's a little bit of a bubble up here. So I had to go get a new one and I did not film how to remove it, but now I gotta remove this one. So what I'm gonna do is, and take a pry bar. I have taped it up so I don't mar the inside of this. Just kind of stick it in here and pull it out just like this. So this one's coming out pretty easily because it's brand new. But yeah, you could see right here where the seal got caught that ripped it up. So that is not good. It's not what you want to have. So now I will reinstall the new one. I'm gonna take a paper towel and wipe this off, clean up the surface, the ceiling surface. This is very important. And I think what happened is there's a little bit of like, I don't know if it's rust, but like a little bit of corrosion on the outside. And I think that's what tore up the seal well, when I was pushing it in. So I'm just gonna make sure the surface is clean. Uh, all the edges are smooth. And then you can put it in the new seal. I have my new seal. Here's the part number. I will post a picture with this. So, uh, I know other people have used a special tool. There's one, it's like 70 bucks, it's a machined piece. Uh, I did not want to buy that. So what I'm actually using is a two inch PVC pipe. And I got this cap and this perfectly fits on the seal. So here's the seal and this perfectly fits over. So I'm gonna use this to seat the seal inside. But first, I'm going to put a little bit of multi-purpose grease around the outside of the seal to help it slide in a little bit easier and hopefully avoid that issue that I had uh, before where it got caught and started leaking. So definitely don't want to do that. Get this seated in here as best as I can. Use a rubber mallet. And grab my PVC and just slowly tap it in. And 
And as you can see, this upper side, maybe you can see, this upper side is starting to seed in first. So I just gotta make sure that when I do push it in, On the driver's side, I've got the new seal in, and as you can see, essentially, it's got to be flush with the surrounding. So what I did was I used the 2-inch PVC tube, and then for the rest, if it went in a little bit crooked, I just used an extension, and this basically helped me make sure that it's seated all the way in correctly. So I'll jump over to the passenger side and show you how to do that one. On the passenger side, you could see that the seal is a little bit larger. You have two different seals between the driver and passenger side. And the way I did this is I used a caliper to measure basically from the lip right here that goes around to the edge of the seal. And what I wanted to do is make sure that the whole seal all the way around is seated about five millimeters in. So you can see the lip here, five millimeters in. This is what I've read online, is the correct position for it. With the diff seals done, we could start reassembly with the upper control arms. I have the washer here actually towards uh, the control arm bushing. So now I'm gonna stick this back up and then slowly feed the bolts back through and now this way that big washer is not going to have anywhere to get stuck and now that I've gotten started I'm going to go up to the under the hood side and push the bolt the rest of the way through so here it is now you can see how easily that went in and then you might have to kind of finagle it a little bit and then come back under to adjust this rear side so it's in the correct spot. Just grab it here, just push it through. So here, here's my bolt head, here's my other side, and then take your old washer and take your old nut. And so put the concave side towards the rear like this and then put your nut on. So now I've got my upper control arms reinstalled with the new ones. Um, one important thing is this is loose and because these are rubber bushings, do not torque it to spec until everything is done and the car is on the ground because when you tighten them down in this position uh, and then you lower the car, the control arm is gonna come up and there's going to be a lot of torsion in that rubber bushing. So then it's always going to want to rip. So what you want to do is tighten it down enough so there's still a little bit of play. Once everything else is done, lower the car to its ride height. Wherever that sits, then torque it down so then your bushings are in their nominal position. Since I'm also going to be replacing the tie rod end links, uh, while there's nothing here, this is going to be the easiest way to get it out. So... 19 millimeter on mine here, and then a 7 eighths inch uh, wrench on the lock nut stuck. What I had to do on the other side was heat it up, and so luckily I came prepared. Now that it's heated up, let's try this again. There we go. Whew. So that took a little bit of force. There we go. Now let's get this one on. Since I'm going to get this aligned, um, I'm just going to get it close to where the old one was. It doesn't have to be perfect. And the new tie rod ends come with a new castle nut and a new cotter pin. For lower control arms, I went with the Super Pro 
lower control arms. Um, I will put the part number in the description, but these are just the standard ones, not the offset bushings. And I wanted to get the offset, but they had crazy lead times. So did these, but these came in sooner. And the difference is only 0.6 degrees of camber adjustment, which honestly is not even that much. So uh, these are poly bushings. They're already pressed in. And the biggest difference with these is you do not need to get new OEM hardware. So the OEM hardware is not cheap. And this comes with their own hardware. These are a lot beefier than the OEM ones. I'll show you here in a second, especially the front. But here's the bolt, here's the lock, and then uh, you've got your nut. So keep this exactly how it's lined up so the nut will face the inside on both of them and the ball joint is a heavy duty ball joint it already comes pre-greased so no need to do anything with that and because i had to cut these off i didn't have much of a choice i really didn't want to screw around and try to press the old bushings out and just got new ones i've moved the brake caliper out of the way and i'm going to use a jack stand to kind of get it into place so obviously it's got to go up a little bit more. And one of the things I saw on the other side was it was a little bit of a tight fit. So um, what I did have to do on the other side is use a rubber mallet to kind of get it in. So uh, clearly on this side, I'm going to have to do the same thing. When I took the jack down, it made it a little bit easier to hit these in. Now the front needs a little bit. There we go. So now the control arm is in and I'll use the jack to support it so it doesn't droop down too much. Obviously this can droop down, it's not a problem. And because these are poly bushings, you do not need to wait until the vehicle is sitting on its weight to tighten down the bolts. You can do it while it's in the air. And because once you do, you can just move this around. So you will have a thinner and a thicker nut, uh, bolt. So the thicker one goes in the rear, the thinner one goes in the front. And put some anti-seize on both of these so we can avoid a situation like we did with the old ones where they're stuck and they gotta get cut out. We will put our locking tab on. And then our nut. So make sure that the nut is on the inside. And it doesn't really matter right now uh, where the alignment is. I'm taking it to alignment shop anyway to get it done. So I'm not too worried. And then same thing for the rear. Uh, the rear will have the thinner bolt and slide it in from the rear. This way, the nut is on the inner side. When you do put this in, just make sure the, uh, the tabs here, are the cams are within the tabs. This will help out. rotate it in a way so then these can fully seat in like this and then same with the front and I'll tighten these down to there's torque spec but because this is getting an alignment and the alignment shop is within like two miles from where I live I'm just going to tighten it down enough to not fall off 
and I'll let the alignment shop torque these to spec. Now that these are installed and the bolts are tightened down, I can show you the reason that I ended up getting with the Super Pro. So you can see this is all the way down, but easily I could just move it up. So with a rubber bushing, when you install it, you want to torque down uh, the hardware when the vehicle is at ride height so that the bushing stays in one position at its nominal ride height position. But if it goes down or up, the bushing will basically stretch and flex and the bushing will always want to go to the normal ride height. Obviously, when you put on a lift kit, the suspension comes down a little bit. So when you tighten the rubber bushings, they stay. But with these poly ones, this will ultimately give me more articulation, more travel, because these poly bushings are not fighting to go back to its normal ride height position like a rubber bushing will. And because I got the extended travel Dobinson IMS suspension, this is going to give me much more articulation. Now that the lower control arm is installed, I will install the lower ball joint attachment. So this is from the old control arm. This is going to get reused and Super Pro provides you with a new cotter pin for the castle nut. So let's take this off, get rid of the protective boot. And so this piece here will go towards the front side. This basically stops uh, you from overturning your steering wheel and then put the nut on. The torque spec for this is 103 foot pounds and with castle nuts, a trick is torque it to spec, and then if the holes do not line up, uh, tighten it a little more, never loosen it. On the Super Pros, this is a 24 millimeter nut. This is bigger than the stock 19 millimeter, so clearly there's a much heavier duty ball joint. This is gonna turn, but that's not a problem. Make sure you keep it kind of straight and torque it to 103 foot-pounds. Take your cotter pin, slide it in. Luckily, this one lined up. Grab some pliers, pull it all the way through. This nut from ever coming off. On accident. So there we go. That's done. Next step is going to be put the axle in. To make it easier on me, I have strapped the axle up to the top of the strut tower, and this is holding it pretty much in line. So I will slide this in. When I feel the splines go in, I will use the flats that I used to pull it out, but I'm going to put a pry bar on here and push it in. So I'm gonna insert this, be careful not to damage the seal when inserting it. And then once that's done, feel the splines go in. You could try to push it in. I didn't have much luck on the other side. So put the pry bar here, hit it, and it should go in. Now that I have the control arm supporting this as well, this should be hopefully a little bit easier. <laughs> And I don't have to worry about screwing this up. So I'm going to try to hit it from the bottom side and see if that works. Now the axle is fully seated. So that wasn't too bad. I will also be replacing the dust seals on the spindle. So this thing, uh, to get it out, I'm just gonna take a pry bar, stick it kind of right under here on the dust seal, and then hit it with a hammer. Um, do it kind of around a couple spots, and then it'll pop off. So see how it's bending? And there we go popped off so uh, you can see there's a little bit of remnants of the old seal in here so obviously the seal has been in here forever and is worn out I'm gonna clean up the bearing with just a paper towel nothing else and then get to reinstalling the new seal 
So I've got a new seal, and what I found is the easiest way to reinstall this is to use the old dust cap from the uh, where the axle nut is. So it perfectly fits in here like this. So I'm going to put a little bit of uh, white lithium paste right here, and it'll help get it. I've just put a little bit on here to help get this started. So I'm going to seat this in as best as I could. Grab my... And because I've got new dust shields, that doesn't really matter. These are pretty cheap, so. Now I've got this fully seated in here, so I've got a brand new dust seal. Now I'm going to install the spindle to the axle. And the two bolts that go here and on the other side, right here, these are torqued to 166 foot pounds. And I'm just going to put a little bit of blue Loctite on those to get them ready. And because our spindle's got a new dust seal, it is ready to go. So, a little bit of blue Loctite. And this is definitely going to be a two-hand job. That didn't come out right. Uh, <laughs> but, lift this up. Ugh. And put the... I got these tightened down. Now I can take off this strap from the axle. And now that I've got this off, I can install my upper control arm into the spindle. Oh, there we go. To reinstall the brake caliper, uh, these are 17 millimeter bolts. I'm gonna put a little bit of Loctite on these as well. And these get torqued down to 79 foot pounds. The important thing is, because this caliper has been off for a little bit and it's been moved around, just make sure the brake line is not turned around or in a position where ugh, it's twisted up. And now you can reinstall uh, your brake line brackets. So this will go here. You've got an anti-rotation tab. So put that in. And then this little bracket goes back here. And then like we removed our ABS sensor, pull the tape off plug it back in. Final piece. She's a beaut. Oh, so, let's see the best way to do this. You have three studs. I'll curl over. The two facing you will be towards the outside and then the one is in the rear. So, I'm gonna actually loosen up this upper control arm too to make it a little bit easier and give me a little bit more room. <sighs> put the three nuts on top and these are going to be 15 millimeter
the bolt and nut combo at the bottom is gonna get reused. So you're gonna have a bolt, a washer, and a nut. Slide it through, just make sure it lines up. And then you may have to lower the control arm, but to keep it from doing anything stupid, I will reinstall the upper. Now that I've got this bolt through, I will put the nut and the washer on. The torque spec for this is 100 foot pounds. And for the upper control arm to the spindle is a 19 millimeter, and this is 82 foot pounds of torque. And again, because the hole is not visible through the uh, castle nut, tighten it down a little bit more. There you go. Now, uh, they supply a cotter pin. There we go. Now the final three bolts, uh, nuts, for the strut, these are a 15 millimeter. The torque spec on this is like 40 some foot pounds. Uh, but I'm never gonna be able to get a torque wrench in here. Next, I'm gonna tighten down the tie rod end link. For me, this is a 22 millimeter nut and the torque is 67 foot-pounds. There we go. Now to get the brake line bracket. So this one here, so you can see there is a uh, hole here for an anti-rotation tab. This bracket here goes on the back of this one. And the main one uses a 12 millimeter nut or uh, bolt. Just gotta get this aligned. It's a way off. There we go. And then the other one, which is up here, and there is already a little uh, weld nut. So this one is a 10 millimeter. So this little 10. There we go. It's on tight. So our bracket is done. And then there's one final one at the top. So that's going to be this one up here. So this is to hold the brake line onto the uh, controller. I see this is a little bit tight. So there it goes. And then this nut is supplied with the control arm assembly that comes from free and off road. And this as well is a 10 millimeter. That's good enough. So this basically will hold my uh, brake line in the correct spot. I'm gonna put the nut on and tighten it down with an impact. I will torque it down later because uh, it's very difficult to torque down. What I'm going to end up doing is have somebody sit in the car, press the brakes, that way they hold on. And then now, you can see there's a little bit of a gap. When I tighten this down, it 
devices to torque down uh, the axle nut. So have somebody push the brakes and then it's 173 foot pounds. Okay, and that is it. After the axle nut is torqued down, put this little uh, crown pin sort of thing in, and then slide your cotter pin. Once the cotter pin's in here, spread it out. And then we can put on the dust cap. I got new dust caps, so cotter pin is in. Now I'm just gonna use a rubber mallet to get this seated. Just kind of make sure it's and this is done. There's the front all buttoned up. Got a lot of space here. And my control arms, everything's tightened up, brakes. So this gives me a lot of space and I don't even have to do a body mount chop. I can still go with a little bit bigger tires in the future and still be fine. So this is what it looks like. From the front bottom, here's the new Super Pro control arms. I got these aligned and adjusted. This is how my CV boot angles look. This is with no diff drop. So this is what I've got. Everything's tightened up. I've driven this a couple hundred miles now and drives really well. Here's what the rear lift looks like. It's pretty tall. You can see there's a lot of space. And I've got my Super Pro, my Dobinson, and obviously the new springs. Now that the lift kit is fully on the Lexus, we're going to flex it out a little bit with these ramps I have for oil changes. So. Drive on up. So here it is, flexed out. Let's check the rear. Got it. Got some good flex. Oh, I got a, got way more to go to tuck here. And this is not too bad on this side.